hello everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel and today we have samsung galaxy a02 for repair this phone is in dead condition it was brought to me by another technician so i want you guys to pay close attention on how i'm going to be repairing this device pay close attention make sure you don't skip this video okay all right let's check the voltage of the battery that's the first thing we are going to do right now. Checking the voltage of the battery and that is 3.6 volts, which is a good volt. Okay. All right. If you're interested in our online class, our numbers are on the screen. Please make sure you DM us on the number on the screen on WhatsApp. We are going to tell you the next step into joining our online training and you are going to learn a lot, a lot. And you can see this phone is not powering on all right this phone is not powering on so what next are we going to do pay close attention and make sure you don't skip this video all right now the next step to do uh the next thing to do is to connect the dc power supply all right so if you're a technician you don't have dc power supply you need to get one all right because it is one of the equipment we use to detect faults in the phone all right there are some readings we get on the dc power supply that will tell us exactly what the phone is going through all right so now let's pay close attention to the dc power supply all right let's go don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this video i mean to this channel and you're going to learn a lot of things now let's go to the dc power supply all right as you can see it's drawing 0 0.03 amps right there and that right there is a sign of short on this pcb when you plug the dc power supply to the pcb it should not automatically draw amps my students my online students already know all these things so if you want to know more about this please join our online training for more details on this okay so now the next thing to do as a technician is to put your multimeter on diode mode to take readings on the pcb to further tell you where to troubleshoot okay now let's go the multimeter is now on diode mode okay now let me start diagnosing it is very important you know how to use multimeter as a technician all right let's go to the vbat first taking the reading on the GND of the VBAT and is GND is always reading properly as we all know all right but in your case if it does not read please ground it now the VBAT reading again this is the VBAT reading the positive side 0 0.4 voltage drop which is a very good reading okay now where could the problem be where could this problem be is a question we need to answer all right but the answer comes by troubleshooting you need to keep troubleshooting if you want to learn more about troubleshooting join our online training and we'll teach you now we need to do physical inspection on the pcb it is very important as a technician that you know how to do physical inspection to see whether there is a burnt corrosion or a crack on the pcb all right so now i've checked the pcb there's no corrosion or anything now i need to take more readings on diode mode so all the capacitors on this pcb i'm going to be reading every one of them okay at least the one i can see i can access all right so on each section of the pcb now i'm reading the the coils the box on the power ic section all right if you want to know how to take reading using your multimeter we have a video on our youtube channel that detects it now pay close attention at the reading on these capacitors the diode value are extremely low 0.15 six all right as you can see from my multimeter right now 
this capacitor is fine this one is fine as well now these big two these two big capacitors the diode value is extremely low so now this section looks suspicious all right how do we further know whether this section is having a problem or not follow me don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe let's go to this schematic diagram schematic diagram is going to tell us exactly what is happening on this section now we need to examine the doubt value of those capacitors on our schematic diagram i'm going to zoom it closer for you to see right now now when you are using this schematic diagram to help you to troubleshoot phone problem effectively now check the dead value on the screen this capacitor is supposed to give us 0.430 voltage drop or 0.4 voltage drop on diode reading okay so now let's take the reading again and let's see what is going on on this mobile pcb getting a multimeter red probe on ground and black probe to take another reading of those capacitors let's take another reading now that is 0 0.156 it's supposed to be 0 0.4 voltage drop i hope you guys are following me that's how to troubleshoot so if you're a technician you don't have a schematic diagram you have a long way to go and if you have a schematic diagram you don't know how to read it join our online training and we're going to teach you how to read your schematic diagram now remember we took some reading of some capacitors down there all right under those two big capacitors and they were also giving the same value so why are they giving the same value now look at that this capacitor right here is connecting both sections together that was why they were reading they were giving the same reading i hope you guys are following me now let's go back to the pcb and let's inject voltage on the vbat section if you want to know the actual voltage you need to inject on this pcb please join our online training let's monitor under the thermal camera to see which area is eating up and how many it is coming out from this section all right remember the dc power supply to those it's as it short but now take note of that small dot over there when I disconnect the probe, the heat goes away. When I connect it back, I hope you guys can see that little heat right there. That is a sign of partial short. Partial short or half short. Now, taking a closer look, when I talked about physical inspection, you will see there is a brownish color that, are, that is different from the PCB main color which means it has been going on between these two capacitors and which turns that color to be brown so that is why it is very important as a technician to do physical inspection alongside your troubleshooting i hope you guys are getting me now i'm going to take out one of those two capacitors and i'm going to take another reading on that spot okay now let's take out the capacitor and the capacitor is out one of the capacitors is out now we are going to take another reading from our multimeter to see if the shot is still there 
or the short is gone. Okay? Let's see if the diode value reading is going to give us the accurate one that we see on the schematic diagram. Let's go. As you can see, we have a good reading. 0 0.4 voltage drop. <laughs> to troubleshoot is very easy, guys. All you need to do is to know what you're doing. All right? So this is the bad capacitor. So this capacitor that we removed obviously had partial short reading. As partial short. So this phone was suffering from a partial short problem. That was why it is dead. Now, you see, it, it draws zero amps. That means this phone should turn on. <laughs> Hit the like button if you are enjoying this video. Now, let's power on the phone. Let's go. And the phone is on. <laughs> And the phone is working perfectly, guys. If you want to know more about troubleshooting, join our online training or you come for physical training. There, you are going to understand the real concept of troubleshooting mobile phone repairs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and share this video with your technician friends. Also, you can support us by clicking the thanks uh, option on our YouTube channel and make your donations. <laughs> Guys, it's very interesting when you troubleshoot phone and you get results. See you in my next video. Peace.